Smartest Shark Behavior Hey everyone, it's Alexa and welcome back to Taltanic. Before we get into today's video, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification so you won't miss any of our uploads. Just how intelligent are sharks? Turns out they're not just massive feeding machines. Keep watching to find out how much intellect a shark-toothed shark really has. Not small brainers. Pop culture portrays sharks as these cold blooded beasts that move forward with the sole intention of destruction and chaos. However, when you really look into shark behavior, this simply does not ring true. For one, not all sharks are cold blooded. The biggest predator of them all, the great white shark, as well as the mako shark, turn out to be warm blooded. With the mako and great white, scientists also found that these sharks can raise the temperature of their blood to the temperature of the water. Warm blood assists them in growing fast speeding through the water much faster in short bursts while hunting. A study in 2016 shows that sharks show similarities in their brains to that of mammals and even humans. Some species of sharks have larger brains, allowing them to exhibit more complex behavior than previously thought. Are sharks social or loners? In most stories, whether they be fictional or on the news, you often see and hear about lone sharks attacking people. Or when people spot sharks, they usually see just the one, unless they find themselves near a huge shark population. So what's the truth? Do sharks travel alone or in groups? The answer isn't so simple. Some species do swim through the waters alone, living reclusive lives. However, other species do live in groups and even form hierarchies like the hammerhead, but more on that later. Like humans, sharks may act both socially and be solitary. When it comes to the great white, they can operate both ways, usually in groups for the purpose of mating or migrating. Although when it comes to hunting, they get really territorial and like to to do that on their own. No GPS needed. You probably know that of course sharks can be found in certain areas of the world. We should emphasize, however, that they don't just wander around all the time trying to eat random things. A shark likes its natural environment, and unless the search for food takes them elsewhere, they will typically stay in a particular region. Sharks attune themselves greatly to their environment so much that they can sense when something small changes and will react to it, which indicates a higher level of intellectual capacity. When something like climate change or a huge weather occurrence like a hurricane happens, sharks will leave the area and then come back, not that unlike your pet cat that loves to wander off and eventually comes back. How they hunt In movies we see sharks just darting towards something at the distance head on with their prey totally aware of their presence. However, in real life, sharks try their best to be more evasive and sneaky. Great white sharks, pelagic predators, will be more stealthy and attack their prey from behind or beneath. So whether that fish saw them beforehand, they probably didn't catch sight of them at the last minute. That's when it counts. These types of sharks hunt bigger prey and marine mammals like seals and sea lions. Many times, a shark may accidentally attack a human if they mistake a human silhouette for a seal's. The bigger the animal, the less the shark tries to maul it all at once and will instead wound it, then wait for it to bleed out on the floor. Other sharks do it a little different. Benthic sharks, such as the Japanese bull shark that lurks closer to the ocean floor, may use camouflage as a means of taking prey by surprise. Benthic sharks will often blend into the rocky and sandy texture of the bottom of the sea and stay completely still until the object of their hunger passes by overhead. Once the prey gets close enough, a benthic shark will lunge upwards and swallow it whole, which isn't hard because they feed on mollusks, small fish, and sea urchins, but still, no escape. These sharks are a little smaller and are slower, so they know they cannot always fight an animal in order to eat it. So like their bigger cousins, benthic sharks rely on the element of surprise. Solve that problem. It sounds creepy, but interesting nonetheless. Shark attack survivors have reported that they have been quote unquote gently mauled by sharks, but what could that possibly mean? Well, it suggests the shark wasn't just trying to tear them apart for the sake of hunger or violence, rather a slower, gentle kind of bite shows that they exhibit levels of curiosity. Sharks usually do not mean to attack humans, so when they do, they probably get a little confused and then their interest is piqued. When sharks do appear in groups, they exhibit behaviors that let us know they communicate with each other and work together. When a large prey's body, like a whale, is too big for one shark to carry over, they work in tandem to move the carcass so that they can all feed on it. 
Sharks and Migration On the occasion that a lone shark may join a group, we already mentioned how it's usually for the purposes of migrating or mating. We also talked about how keen their sense of their environment is. As reported this past spring by National Geographic, thousands of sharks stayed in their habitat in North Carolina instead of traveling south for warmer climates. Thanks to climate change, the temperatures up north don't get as cold as they usually do, so the sharks seem to feel no need to travel hundreds of miles. A Shark's Memory Throughout the years, people noticed that sharks learn to remember certain boats and even frequent divers. Even though a bigger brain does not necessarily mean they hold better memory, sharks do prove they remember certain people and things. When a shark bumps its nose into something, whether it be a person or a boat, that indicates the shark wants to find out what exactly is in front of them. For the most part, sharks will actively avoid humans and human devices and bait as they are really sensitive to electromagnetic currents. Experts trained sharks to recognize shapes before, too. Similar to the way you might train a dog. Moving at night. These mighty fish know their strengths. Many sharks move at night, nocturnal by nature. They are often sluggish during the day and know that in the dark, their instincts will help them hunt better if it's nighttime. One shark that excels during the nighttime is the cookie cutter shark, or the cigar shark. This type of dogfish shark has a unique characteristic amongst its shark family, their bioluminescent bellies. They live in warm waters all over the world, but mostly near islands, and aren't afraid to venture deep, as far as 2.3 miles below the surface of the water. They use their green glowing stomachs to lure prey right into it. Sharks know what they want. You might have heard that lots of sharks don't mean to attack humans. You might also hear that sharks don't even like the taste of humans. Both of these statements are true. It should be noted, however, that many times when a shark does go after a person, it's not for food. Sharks can easily tell that humans possess little high-fat meat. Lots of people imagine great white sharks when it comes to human incidents, though about 30 other species have been identified in shark attacks. Sharks behave extremely territorially, so another reason they go after humans is if they feel you've trespassed on what's theirs. We can understand that to a degree, can't we? Sharks that want it all. First, we discussed feeding behaviors of pelagic hunting sharks. Then, we talked about how benthic sharks get their prey. Then you have filter feeders, like basking sharks, who open their mouths and move through the water, capturing anything that's small enough to fit and also unfortunate enough to get caught. You might think that's lazy, but it's a method that works for these huge fellas. Basking sharks act much less aggressively than other species and will tolerate the presence of boats and divers, but they will get upset and fight back if you try to harpoon them. A shark's best friend. Despite how scary they look and generally dangerous, sharks do not rip everything apart in sight. A handful of other organisms can say they are in a symbiotic relationship with sharks. If you've seen small striped fish travel with sharks, you would also have noticed that sharks don't do anything to them. What's interesting is that scientists don't completely understand why they do this and why the sharks don't seem to mind. Perhaps the pilot fish like to rely on the force of the hydrodynamic bow sharks leave behind them. Then you have little cleaner fish known as cleaner wrasse that eat off the small debris stuck to sharks or any parasites. The sociality of hammerhead sharks. Different sharks, of course, show different ways of interacting with each other. One of the more notable and interesting cases involves the habits of hammerhead sharks. About nine species of hammerhead sharks exist and they all use unique ways of communicating with each other. See, hammerhead sharks form groups and establish a social hierarchy within those groups. Through certain positions of body language, hammerhead sharks are able to let each other know where they stand and even give orders to one another. They travel in large schools with anywhere from 100 to 500 individuals, with most of them being female. Growing up shark. As territorial as sharks are, they will often leave their offspring to fend for themselves. Chances are when you see a baby shark, there's not a parent shark around. It's a brutal world out there under the water and sharks learn all by themselves how to navigate through it. Parent sharks will find a safe place to lay eggs, though other species will either have the eggs hatch inside of them or even give birth live. The mother will make sure her children first arrive in the world in a safe place, but she's gone right after. The Gentle Giant The largest whale shark grew to be 41 and a half feet long and weighed about 47,000 pounds. However, on average, they measure 32 feet long. These gentle giants move slowly through the water and, like basking sharks, filter feed instead of hunt. They are amongst some of the most peaceful species of shark out there. Described as being timid, whale sharks behave rather peacefully in contrast to their beastly size. They swim around schools of fish and don't even eat them since they only feed on fish eggs, krill, copepods, and other small organisms.
Hey everyone, we're almost at number one. But before we get there, let's ask what you think first. If you could talk to sharks, what would you want to ask them? And more importantly, what do you think they would say? Let us know in the comments down below. One, a shark dinner party. When you go to a dinner party, most of the time you don't jump on the table, throw food around, and try to fight your friend for a chicken leg. The same thing goes for when some shark species get together and feed. In groups, sharks prove to be very calm and organized when it comes to feeding on something they all worked on to hunt. Instead of getting lost in a huge, frenzied feast, bigger sharks, like great white sharks, may take turns and calmly take their portion of the animal carcass. In one instance that took place in South Africa, great white sharks were observed cooperating on pulling a pygmy southern right whale to deeper water and then feeding. Experts saw that these sharks were all relaxed around each other, showing a lack of ocular rotation in their eyes, which happens so that they can protect their eyes when attacking prey. When sources are scarce, however, sharks will resort to cannibalism.